Well hello once again and welcome to the Waters and Stanton video channel. You're most welcome. Today I'm in my garage, surrounded, would you believe, by old radios. Yes, these are some old friends of years ago. But today we're not going to talk about old radios. We're going to talk about the very modern radio, the Wuxon KGQ332 handheld. It's a tri-band radio. So let's see what this radio has to offer. By the way, should we call it Wuxon or Ocean? In the UK, generally, people refer to it as Wuxon, but in America, they refer to it as Ocean. Well, one way or another, in the handbook, they explain the meaning of the name. The W stands for world, the O or U stands for singing around the world, and the Xun or Shun stands for communication. I found that interesting. Perhaps you do as well. Oh, well, perhaps you don't. It's a conventional analog radio covering six meters, two meters, and 70 cents. I'll be honest, when I first got this radio, I couldn't figure out how to turn it on. Normally, there's a button somewhere that you press to switch the radio on, but none of these buttons seem to be right, and I pressed this one and pressed that one, and I looked on the side, and none of those buttons did anything, or on the other side, we just had connectors. So I thought, how do I switch this radio on? And then I suddenly realised this radio was like radios of years gone by. It's got a volume control on the top. And it's also, if you rotate it, it switches the radio on. It's that simple. You rotate the volume control and a uh, little announcement comes up. I don't know whether you heard that at all. And uh, switches the radio on. Now on the back, you've got a nice hefty battery actually. It's quite chunky. And I'll just put on the bottom of the screen here because you can't see it on the camera. I'll put on the bottom of the screen the capacity of the battery. But, uh, that uh, should give you uh, a fair few hours of operation. It's uh, nice to hold, fits nicely in the hand sits on the desk nicely and it's got a nice screen actually um turn the radio on just Channel there's also an announcement that tells you what uh, you're doing with the radio which is quite you can turn that off if it's annoying there's also a beep tone but i turn that off i find beep tones a bit annoying uh, anyway um the screen obviously goes um sort of subdued mode after a few seconds i'll press that bring it back but as you can see it's quite a nice screen so what's the radio like in sunny light, which is pretty sunny today? It uh, looks like being one of the sunniest days or hottest days in September, apparently. Well, actually, it's not too bad. I can read the display OK. We can adjust the brightness of the screen, both when it's active and when it's on standby. We go into the appropriate menu here. We've got BRT active and standby. We press that button. We can set the screen levels. 10 is the brightest and uh, 1 is the lowest. On this radio, there are two menu systems. There's the primary men menu system, which relates to items which you would want to change per channel or per frequency. And you get into that by a quick press on the menu button there. And after a few seconds, it goes back to its uh, main display. There's also a secondary menu system which relates to items which you want to change, which are of a general nature, nature like screen brightness, etc. And that's reached by holding this button in for about two seconds. And that menu comes up. And if you want to exit anything, you press that button on the right. To change a menu item, you go into the menu system and then you press that button again and then you get the choices. To change a value or switch an item on and off, you use this lower button here just below the volume control. This button of course also adjusts the frequency when you're in the frequency mode. The radio itself is waterproof and uh, there are two ways of charging the radio. You, you can pop it into the drop-in charger which comes with the radio or very conveniently on the side there you've got a USB-C uh, charging point there. But it's very easy to um, plug in to a uh, car system here. I've got a USB lead with a USB-C on the other end and that will plug straight into the 
a transceiver for charging and that makes it very very convenient actually i know a lot of people love the idea of usb-c ports now for charging equipment it's very handy and it's becoming universal if we have a closer look on the left hand side of the radio you've got four buttons the top one is to enable you to transmit on the secondary frequency on the display the one that's at the lowest on the display and the next button is a main button which you know, we should transmit on the main display item. Bear in mind that this transceiver has got two frequencies, the, the main one and the secondary one, and it monitors both frequencies at the same time. The next button down, if you press that briefly, you'll put it into the scan mode. It'll either scan the channels or scan the stored memories. And the bottom one is the button you use to open the squelch. But you can actually program these buttons. And in fact, the buttons have two functions, a quick press or a long press. So you've got four buttons, a quick press and a long press on each one. And these can be programmed personally to suit your needs. These buttons are known as personal function buttons. And if we go into the menu system, you'll see that you can program the long and short button presses of each button. Below the buttons is a blanking plate there. This has no function on this particular model. And on the other side, above the USB charging socket, which I uh, mentioned earlier, is the point where you'd plug in a speaker microphone. A speaker microphone is an optional extra. For some reason, the blanking plate is held in by screws. I suppose it's in order to keep it waterproof. But anyway, if you want to plug an external the speaker microphone and you'll have to take those uh, two screws out there and finally there's a button on the top there which is quite handy because if you press it you get quite a nice torch i mean in daylight it doesn't show up much but it's quite bright actually so you've got a torch as well by the way a quick shout out for the waters and stanton video channel we stock the entire Wuxon range now as well as a wide range of other products so whatever you're looking for we've got some great prices We've got some really good staff waiting to serve you. And if you've got any questions, just give them a call. They'll be more than glad to help you. Remember, Waters and Stanton, we've been going for a long time. 50 years, would you believe? By the way, when I was testing this radio, I spent a certain amount of time on holiday in Suffolk. I went to Hellingham Hall. An amazing garden to look around, lots of sculptures and also some very nice food for lunch. Then I went to the Norfolk and Suffolk Aircraft Museum, particularly interesting to me because I've always been interested in aircraft. And I found an aircraft that was particularly interesting for me. Behind me is a Jet Provost, which uh, is uh, one of my favourite aircraft simply because I was able to fly one about uh, 30 years ago now um, with a uh, service pilot. And then finally I went to Southwold, a lovely coastal town, and spent the evening at the local theatre watching a production by Alan Aikborn of Relatively Speaking, a nice way to round off the evening and the holiday. So enough of the holiday, let's take a look at the basic specification of the radio and then I'll take you through the basic operation of the radio and how I found it. The radio covers the 6 meter band, 2 meter band and 70 sems band. On 6 meters and 2 meters it gives a maximum of 5 watts out and on 70 sems 4 watts out. And there are medium and low powers which are 2 watts on all bands and 1 watt on all bands. As you can see, the receive coverage is quite wide, and I've put the total coverage on the page here. It covers the FM broadcast band, which is quite useful uh, if you want it as an additional radio as well. Interestingly enough, it also covers the VHF airband, and it covers part of the UHF airband. And I found that on the UHF coverage, I could actually switch to AM mode. So it means to say that you can cover the uh, higher portion of the military AM airband, which will please some people. It's also got a very wide number of steps, start, starting off at 2.5 kHz, 
5 kilohertz, 6 and a quarter kilohertz, 8.33 kilohertz, 10 kilohertz, 12.5 kilohertz, 25, 50 and 100 kilohertz. So that should cover most needs. Now let's look at the front panel. Um, we've got two frequency displays. The large one is the active one. In other words, that's the one that will uh, transmit if you press the main PTT button. And we can switch between those two uh, channels. We can have that channel as the active one or that channel as the active one. Both of those are live channels and any signals appear, you'll, re you'll receive them. If I, if I press this next button down here, I can disable the secondary channel. So now we've just got a mono handheld if you like and it's just on the fixed frequency there i'll switch that again we bring in the secondary channel and we can switch between those two channels um, as we wish the number buttons allow you to enter a frequency direct and the secondary function of those buttons is achieved by first of all pressing the function button there and then pressing the button there to get the secondary function and we press that button to escape to go through the various bands we hold this button down here for about a second or so and that will start to go through the various bands on the radio a long press on the next button down allows us to switch between the main frequency display or the memory section and the bottom button there rpt basically allows you to transmit on one frequency and receive on the secondary frequency and if i briefly press this button in here on the left we have the fm broadcast channel now that fm broadcast channel um, although you're listening to it the other two secondary channels or the other two channels the main channel and that secondary channel there are both live they're both monitoring so if any Thing appears on either of those channels it will interrupt the uh, FM broadcast. Let's now talk about how you'd enter a repeater. First of all with the dial here you select the frequency of the repeater, the output frequency of the repeater. Now assuming it's an analog repeater we normally have to enter a CTCSS tone which we do in the menu system here. Next we have to set the offset which on a VHF repeater would be normally 600 kilohertz. And then finally, we have to go into the shift and, sh and set that to on. As with most handhelds, it makes sense to set up each repeater and then put it into the memory system. The memory system, by the way, is often numerics and you can give each channel a name. To adjust power, you go into the one of the quick menu buttons here to set the power and you can set different powers for different memory channels and finally let's have a look at what you actually get in the box you get the user manual which is comprehensive and uh, is, is very uh, helpful obviously you get the main radio you get two antennas and they don't actually explain the difference between the two antennas but by experimentation the longer antenna is for the six meter band and also tends to work better on the fm broadcast band the shorter antenna works better on the air band, the two meter band and the 70 sems band, much as you would expect, I guess. Then you've got a belt clip here. You've got a 13 amp mains plug there with the output cable going to the hot charger. So you can actually pop the radio into the hot charger, which tends to charge it faster, but you can also use the USB socket. They don't provide a USB lead, but there again, most of us have got USB leads these days. And finally, they provide a little wrist strap, which goes through that hole there in the casing. But all I've got is a handheld. I'm not driving, by the way. I've um, got a handheld, um, and I should probably be able to range fairly short from 30 JV Mobile. I, I, I have um, I have ordered some stuff there before in the past, um, but uh, it was a while ago. No? So that's the. Wuxon KGQ332 triple band transceiver, 6 metres, 2 metres and 70 sems. I think handheld radios come in three sorts, three, three flavours. You get the very basic one, which is analogue and gives you just sort of some basic um, frequencies, basically band coverage and so forth. You get at the other end of the extreme, the Icom and Yosa ones, which have got uh, digital modes and so forth on, and very comprehensive, 
Um, very large, clear screens, rather like your smartphone. And then you get the middle of the road, which this one falls in. Now this one falls in the middle of the road because it is analog, but it's got a lot of features. It covers, of course, the air band. It gives you FM broadcast band. It also gives you part of the military air band. And in actual fact, as I did over the uh, last few days, I set the transceiver up so that I had, in the memory, I, ha I had some repeaters, some simplex channels and some airband channels. And that really suited me down to the ground. It's certainly got a lot of menus. It's got a nice clear screen and it functions very logically. Once you work out how to navigate the radio, then the memory, uh, sorry, the menu items are very easy to program and they're very obvious actually. The handbook is very useful. It's strange that it doesn't have the specification in the handbook, but I guess it's, as I said earlier in the video, I think it's a generic handbook. But what is in the handbook is very comprehensive and it covers all the aspects of the operation of the radio. And I found it very good. And um, the battery, of course, 3 amp hour battery, that's big. That seems to last for ages. I had no qualms about running out of battery power at all. And the USB connection, of course, was very, very useful. So it functions very well. It, it was reliable. It didn't get hot, really. It got a bit warm if I transmitted for a long time, but it was no, no real problem. So I think it's a nice radio. It's the middle of the road radio. If you just want analog only, you haven't got digital repeaters, or you don't want to use digital repeaters, then it's fine. So there we are. That's my view on the Wuxon KGQ332 triple band transceiver. What a mouthful. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for your support on this channel. It's much appreciated. Don't forget to press the subscribe button. That alerts you to upcoming videos. And we do well, at least one a week on this channel. And I do appreciate your support at the shop as well. The Waters and Stanton shop, which is now at Milton Keynes. And we'd be glad to see you very close to the uh, M1 motorway. You'd be most welcome there. And if you can't get there, you can always pick up the phone, speak to somebody, or you can go on to our website, which has got all our products there. And we are continually expanding our website. So in the meantime, you enjoy your ham radio. Thanks for your support. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now. Beep, beep,